Yo. What's up? You seeing anything? Good morning, everybody. You'll never guess what I'm going to do today. It's been going on for a while. So what's going to be different about this video versus all the other fencing videos? Well, number one, I got a new Jenny. It's the Jenny on my uh, fence video that I priced out. And, uh, and it's uh, I like it so far. Of course, I hadn't used it yet, but I like it. It's got a little bit of a break. It's gonna apply a little resistance to it, and that's an issue with my old one. We've used it so many times that it just gets to rolling on its own, and the fence gets knotted up, and it's just an, a, an issue. But we're gonna use this. We're gonna build a fence that you guys probably have not seen me do, and it's not for goats. It's gonna be a quick fence for cattle, and I'm gonna give you a little explanation of why I am leaning towards this type of fence for all of our fences, except for traps, uh catches whatever you want to call them where we have to have a secure area for the animals especially if they're a little a little uh they have a little herd mentality which means they want to go with everybody else when they leave and we turn them out uh, sometimes we got to keep them up if they're going to go to the cell or whatever so that's what we're fixing to do. Let's get old Red going. Oh yeah. Okay, we're out here. What I am doing is I'm driving a single pipe in the ground. It's gonna be about five foot in, uh, maybe not quite five, but pretty close. And then way down here, I've got another single pipe. And I'm gonna stretch wire between the two. And it is a single wire standalone single wire the big question is 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 this pipe going to start giving on the stretch and that depends on how tight i get it that depends on how soft the ground was all those kinds of things but what this is allowing me to do it's allowing me to get the fence built pretty quick it's a good fence this is the same type of fence the same type of structure that we did in Texas 25 years ago. Uh, same wire, same everything. Now the ground in Texas is way harder. <laughs> so uh, there's always a chance that I'll have to come back in and brace this with a kicker. But for now, I'm doing it just like we did back then. It's gonna help with this issue with the deer. The deer this time of year are just so destructive. And this wire, at least in Texas, is outstanding against the deer. Uh, you'll notice that we're putting it pretty high. It's, uh, you can see on my leg, you know, it's going to be 36 inches maybe uh, high or so, maybe 40. I don't know. Uh, but it's higher than you would think. And that's perfect for a cow. Uh, some of the calves will be able to go under, but what I, I wanted to tell you was the deer, they go under it, and, and they go under it pretty fast. And this wire is so, this setup is so successful, uh, in Texas anyway, because of the wire and the single pipe brace versus a, you know, a wooden brace or a T-post brace or anything like that. Because I've witnessed in Texas, I witnessed a buck going under the fence and he didn't quite get all the way down. And I didn't realize it at the time because he was quite a ways away from me, but he was booking it. And he ran under that thing and I'm watching him and he gets out there about, I don't know, 15, 20 yards and he starts slowing down. Then his neck starts going like this. And then all of a sudden I, it, I see that wire, I see that wire jump back into place 
and he keeps on going. And so he had hung it with his antlers, but it didn't, it didn't do anything to the wire. So that's what we're doing, that's what I'm doing, and it is allowing me to do it fast, as I can physically do it by myself. Anyway, it's a good wire, good gate, gonna get it done quick. And it is necessary. We'll end up swapping all of our wire out with this. All of our aluminum wire, that stuff, it just does not hold up. The 16 and a half gauge is a death trap. You've seen that on Tangle Bucks. It's just horrible. That stuff is horrible. Anyway, that's what I'm fixing to do here. That's what I've been doing. By the way, the post will be 60 feet apart. That works well. And that's from several years of experience on that. So that's where we're setting them, 60 foot apart. So here we go. So here's my insulated cable. I was gonna show y'all in case you get 12 and a half gauge insulated underground cable that you're using for your jumpers or you're using to go under the ground at a gate or something like that. But you just kind of score it around this thing like this with your blade. Be careful, I mean, cause if you slip, obviously that blade's sharp. So you score it all the way around then you take your set of pliers and you just twist it. I'm twisting like this. And you see it, it came loose. Then you just come to the end here and it just pulls right off. Okay, so this is one of the biggest reasons that I'm doing the single wire electric. And I'll, I'll have to tell you the other reason later and show you because I want to show you why. But yesterday I built fence in, uh, in the morning the afternoon I had to go and clear uh, move cattle out of the creek and there was already about a hundred or so head that had decided a couple of two three days ago that they wanted to just go ahead and come in this pasture and so they tore down a, a cattle panel and they tore down a barbed wire fence and came on in so I had them in here they couldn't go any further because I had already built this fence electric there's a stretch going there stretch up there so they were trapped in here so I went ahead and moved the rest of the herd and I moved them into this in off this creek down here off this river into this big open bottom and then into the next pasture where these cattle would go if they were with them so they all moved right beside these cattle that busted in and so I left these in here overnight. They all been standing down there in that corner, you know, protesting. You see they're still in here. got that so tight yeah, there we go you may go <laughs> tell me that's not great bozos well I've got to go down and do a gap a water gap and the world's greatest is refusing to help me she thinks she's got something better to do she probably does <laughs> I've got to uh, kind of get down in the creek uh, to work on this gap and so I'm looking, I know the beavers have got it dammed somewhere, but I don't think it's, I don't think they have it dammed right here. You can see that's running, that's running pretty solid. But I bet you money they're working on it. Yeah, it's running pretty good out that side too. I'm not gonna go down there. I'm not gonna go down there and check right now. I know there's a dam along this creek cause I saw it the other day. So let's just go on that way. You know, as long as it's not over my boots, I don't really care. Uh, and as long as my boots aren't leaking. <laughs> There's just 
something about first thing in the morning getting a bunch of water down in your boots. <laughs> Don't forget the number one rule when you're dealing with electric fence. Make sure it's shut off. I can see right down there. They've got her dammed up right there. It's running over right now, but I need it to run below it. I may run down there with my shovel first and see if I can do anything. What we've got to do here is we've got to go from the electric fence on this side to the electric fence on that side. And we've got to do it in such a way that we get our power across and we get a line that covers, you know, down here and down there and then up. And normally you've seen me do like a poly wire and the deer have just, they've, they've run me on poly wire. Uh, with the goats, I'll probably keep doing it there. But as far as using it on the cattle, uh, I just, I'm not going to mess with that anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a fence that's, I've got springs. And I'm hoping I can tighten it enough where it's up, where it's up like here. And then with the springs, I can pull it down and stake it down. Where when the water starts running, if it gets up that high it'll just push the fence off the stake and it'll pop up above the water level sounds good doesn't it we'll see how it works first i got to go down there and see if i can't get this thing to drain uh, i don't want to wait out there in it it's going to be up to my waist so let me go see what i can do that's not it it's running through there no problem i'm going to walk down to this next corner there it is i'll tell you what all right i think i got it opened up a little bit uh, we'll see. Hopefully that'll lower where I'm going to be working. It's already lowered at some down here. You can see right there. So maybe that'll be enough where it won't go over my boot. Okay, this is that first one that I looked at. And you can see where the beaver are, are, are working on packing. It was just under the water. So I'm going to have to break that up just a little bit in order to lower this down here where I need to get across. Okay, here's what we've got. Our fence comes in here. I need to get power to that side for that stretch that goes that way. Did a normal tie off here with a tightener, a wire strainer right here to get this tight up above the flood level. If this creek was to get out, this should still be above it. Now, if it was to get out, odds are this is going to go that way and there's going to be other issues but it's just going to be where this one is good this is the one that i'm trying to figure out how to do it and what i've got is i've got spring systems here that are from uh the kiwis spider wire uh things like that we used them on our on our fence at one time and what it does is it allows it to uh, spring and then come back and so as I come down here to the creek, I can't, I'm not going to get down in there again. I've already let it go over my boots twice and I'm done for that. So I can pull this on down and I'll end up putting a post down there and I'll show you what it is. But I can pull this on down and you can see I got a spring over there too. You see, so I can pull quite a bit and then it'll go back. Now it's not going to help me if the water gets up, you know, ground level. This is going to be under. And I'll have to figure out something different on that because my spring doesn't have enough elasticity to hold it up above the level of the creek and still be able to pull it all the way down and attach it down low so it stays there. Some of y'all might be saying, well, you don't want to attach it down low because then the water is going to, you know, constantly be breaking it. And you would be right. But if you've seen that gap over on our, our low water crossing that we always drive across, uh, the cement thing, there's a couple of things that are driven in the ground or welded to a pipe there, and that, that wire attaches to it. Because we have this pipe here, we just did some angle iron with some flat strap, and then we went ahead and, and drilled a little hole in it over here just to put a, a pin or a nail or something to kind of hold it. So if you've got a big rain coming, you can just come down here and pull these pins, and then if the water gets up, 
it'll run over here and run and it'll hit these this wire and push it off that flat strap and this thing will pop up i'll show you kind of what i've done here that i'm going to put in just as soon as the creek kind of gets down a little bit this is just a t-post with a piece of flat iron on it and i'll i'll pound this in down here somewhere and on that side somewhere strategic it will be facing the direction it is right now you can see the river is flowing that way you got to imagine this being down here let me see if i can just kind of stick it in this no that's not soft but so if it was down like that and straight what happens is this wire it pulls down to there and then you put a loop around it and hold the wire you just let it set on that flat iron then if the water starts coming up and it gets uh, the velocity picks up in the water it starts running hard and it starts coming up the water will start beating against this wire and it'll slide that thing off well when it slides it off with these springs it pops up I just don't have like I say I just don't have enough elasticity in the spring to go all the way up where I need it to I've got some other springs that I bought for this reason, and I just didn't think that they would function at all. They wouldn't have enough play in them. These springs are a little longer, so they'll have a little more play, and it's still not enough. So if anybody has any other ideas on that, that would be interesting. One of my other ideas is to, is to put a piece of flexible uh, PVC or fiberglass and i hate fiberglass but put a piece of that in this side and that side flexible where it would bend over like one of your old tree nooses that you catch stuff with where it would bend over the center then you could attach it from up here the same way i'm doing down there with this wire and so when the water started hitting it and it came loose it would go ahead and pull it way up in the air out of the way my problem is i don't know where to get or what to get uh, to do that but if anybody has any thoughts in that of what material I could put in here that would bend over like that, like a tree might do, and then pop up if the wire came loose and get the wire out of the way, that would probably be a solution for a deep, a deep creek. And this creek is fairly deep. It is, oh, 12, uh, you know, 15 feet to the center the big creek over there the bio it is 25 to 26 feet and so whatever i can figure out working here i think will work on the on the bio too uh just a little bit bigger thing to build so one thing that i didn't mention is this is called a limiter this right here so if all this is connected together and the water gets up on this bottom wire because it's going to be you know it's going to be below the absolute top of the creek so if water gets on this this limiter will shut off and so it won't take any power this way to this which means the rest of this will still be hot going over there and the fence will still be hot now i've never used one of these uh, it sounds good in principle i'll see how it works it may not matter if the water gets up as high as i'm saying this whole thing may be gone <laughs> But at least it looks like it will work based on kind of what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that is the setup, and I will keep you posted on how that works. There we go. One more step down. 